Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, much to the chagrin of uh, Gistic Minx, I'm going to do another. Oh, post a ping. Let's just turn that down. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, here's another uh, dude video. This time, uh, it's although it's 30 minutes long, just I'm going to split it into two halves because um, not got to too long. Um, so I'm going to, as I say, split into two halves and we'll do the second half later. Um, thought I'd give you a little bit of an insight into uh, uh, the dude. Something hopefully of interest. Let me just uh, put it here and let me just click on there. <coughs> I'm just going to play the very first clip of uh, of this, and then stop it for a reason. So hopefully that's uh, that's come up. Let me just make absolutely sure that everything clicked that I should do. Yes, and I'm just going to. Let it play and then uh, and then pause it. Hello, everybody. You have tuned in to Eric Jose on Making a Murderer on YouTube. I cover virtually any aspect of making a murderer. I go over the evidence, the documents, the photos. So if you'd like, stay tuned, and in the future, I'll have many more videos besides the one you're about to see. Hello, everybody. Hi. Okay. As you can see, the dude is um, in his, uh, not in his studio yet. He is um, in the house with this uh, kind of elaborate uh, curtain affair behind him. But the interesting thing is the tie. That used to be my tie uh, that I sent to him um, not long after we first started uh, chatting away and... Uh, I went all the way to Southern California. I'd started doing videos wearing a shirt and tie, and and I said, "Yeah, dude, you know, if you if you want to wear a shirt and tie, it uh, always looks good." It's ironic, isn't it, that uh, I'm now doing a video in just a t-shirt when that used to be his uh, way of presenting. But no, he really did appreciate the uh, the fact that he didn't have a tie, so I sent him one. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of insight into this particular tie. Uh, just need to minimize that and go across here and then share that with you. Here is the page for my Cayley band, the Bonacord Cayley band. Uh, we regularly play at this venue here, Dalhousie Castle. And here is myself, Hector McKenzie, and Hector's son, Ian McKenzie. And you'll notice he's got his very smart corporate silver tie. Why is that? Because he used to have a very, very smart McKenzie tartan tie. And I think I can... Go up here and go media, and you'll see some other, another picture. There we go. With the tie. And so he, he gave me, he gave me that Mackenzie Tartan tie. Um, sadly, Hector passed away um, a while back, and. Uh, He'd only just retired, uh, which was which is most unfortunately, most unfortunate. But he had a very very aggressive um, cancer. Um, there's uh, let's say Hector. Here's Dave, who was in the band for a long long time. Uh, Dave again, yours truly, looking rather strange. But then I was a bit younger there. I can tell by the the accordion that I've got there was a Crucianelli uh, 96 bass, whereas 
in this picture here, if we go back to this one here, that was a more recent one when I had the fan. Now I've still got this Fantini accordion. Anyway, um, Hector was the, um, the guy that got me into the band back in 1993. He'd uh, spoken with my brother-in-law-to-be saying that they were looking for an, an accordionist because their accordionist, a very famous Andrew Hennessy of Edinburgh, uh, was, was 85 and was not going to be around much longer. He had also developed uh, cancer, which, uh, which was a huge problem. Um, so anyway, that's uh, a little story about the tie. Um, what, so when uh, so when the dude said about the fact that he had this Scottish heritage, Scottish background, um, there was only one thing for it. Um, Hector wasn't around to to ask if it was okay to send the tie to uh, Los Angeles, but knowing Hector, he would be absolutely delighted to think that his tie had gone all the way to Southern California. Um, just as delighted as the dude was when he received it. I used to send him stuff to his work and uh, he, would, he would regularly get packages of you know, ties and t-shirts and bits of information about Captain Crunch, all, sort, all sorts of stuff. Um, of course, it was also nice that we were uh, able to meet up in person a couple of times. Um, obviously, when we met up in uh, Australia, that was that was absolutely brilliant. Um, but I always remember um, the disappointment that the dude had that I wasn't able to make it to the rally in 2018 because I'd already got a, a booking, a wedding to play at on the Saturday. And with it just being me playing solo accordion and the people knowing me personally, that's the reason why they booked me, was not able to get out of it. But I remember him and Mark sent me a little video from the, um, I think they were somewhere near either the submarine or the, the Budweiser factory. And the dude was saying, you know, you have to come next year. Make sure you come next year. We want to see you here next year and we'll go to the Budweiser factory. We never did go to the Budweiser factory, but we made up for it in the elsewhere, you know, like particularly in the Valley House. With, um, well, obviously Eunice was there and, and Linda and Wanda and there was um, Ali and uh, Denise and uh, obviously uh, Julie, Julie Pom Pom and uh, her son came along. What was his name again? Oh. The dude did a couple of videos with him talking about uh, Doctor Who. Um, that's going to bug me now. Um, I think I've mentioned everybody that was at the, the Valley House. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that, I'm sure that's it. Um, because if I remember, uh, Fen, Fen was also there. Yes, Fen, 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 Julie. Uh, as I say, all the ladies, uh, Eunice and the dude, and what a time we had. Anyway, uh, we're not here to talk about that. I really want to crack on, as I say, because this is. Um, Going to break it up into two halves. I need to need to crack on. So let's uh, go back up here. Let's change that for that. Let's come back here. Uh, stop share. It's on the wrong one. Let's go back to share. And this time it should all be okay. So anyway, as I, uh, hopefully the uh, the story of how the tie arrived at uh, the dude is uh, has been covered. So let's move on. Have a listen to what the dude has to say. How are you doing today? We're here today to talk about Zellner's latest motion filed today on November sixteenth of two thousand seventeen. Um. It was filed today and it's got some more stuff in it, some more, you know, pieces of evidence or pieces of, you know, the pie, I guess, as it were. Um, more stuff about Bobby, the computer, Scott, um, 
Also, um, possible another possible Brady violation that we're looking at here, where some possible evidence was held withheld, and not and it was kind of withheld and and made obscure. Um, basically, there was one piece of paper slipped into a huge, huge batch of discovery, one tiny little piece of paper report, where it says that Tom Fassbender had sent off the Dassey computer to the Grand Shoots uh, Police Department. Officer Veely did a, his thing on it, sent back a CD uh, with, you know, basically d detailing what was on in the computer and, uh, and then like a, a report, basically, that he, you know, generated as he was, you know, looking at the computer and testing it and stuff. So th there's that's what that's what's basically going on here. Um, some a little bit of new stuff, and essentially she's ready now. She's throwing down the gauntlet. She's just basically going, okay, look, I've, I'm I'm here presenting a, a huge amount of 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 reasonable doubt, and not just one or two things, but there's a lot of things going on here, and she's not gotten her evidentiary hearing. So she is now saying, look. This is the last time. I'm filing this now, but this is the last time. If you don't, if you choose not to respond to this, then I'm going. We're going. We're going to file with the appeals court tomorrow, which is November seventeenth of two thousand seventeen. So that's what she's doing. She's like, okay, you know, there's all this evidence that I that that keeps coming up. The content on the computer um, is is undeniable. You know, that that computer content was certainly something that required more attention I mean that's and the and and the fact that it's something that requires more attention but it actually got obscured by being kind of buried by like I said one piece of paper in a huge batch of discovery that says there is a CD and and, an, and a report about what was on that computer the the defense didn't have that that report didn't have that CD and didn't realize what was on that computer when they were trying to argue suspects that could meet the Denny requirement. They were not, so they basically didn't have that. Now, the guilters are going to say, oh, well, that piece of paper was in the discovery. They had the chance to see it and they could have asked for it. Yeah, I guess so. But then, how do you explain why? Why is the why is the evidence in being held by Tom Fassbender personally? Those two items, just those two items, are personally held in Tom Fassbender's custody. Huh? Anyway, that's odd. That's really strange. And what makes it even more kind of screwy is the fact that Dean and Jerry are savvy lawyers they they you know realized that with the huge batches of discovery and stuff maybe there would have been some kind of piece of evidence that maybe they might have missed that there was something in the reports about and they actually went down to the Calumet evidence locker to just go over all of the pieces of evidence and look at them and stuff and and Jerry specifically says that he does not remember there being that CD in that report. And the reason why, the reason why he doesn't remember it being there is because it was in Tom Fassbender's personal custody. I mean, when did Tom Fassbender open up the evidence storage company? I mean, what the heck? I Wouldn't it make more sense if like it was Tom Fassbender went and, and, and took it to DCI and, and, and it was being held over at like DCI's, you know, evidence locker? Or whatever, but maybe that would have created a paper trail. You know, it would create the the paperwork created by logging it in over at DCI would have tipped probably Dean and Jerry off, and they would have seen it. I'm I mean, why is it in his personal custody? That's just odd to me. Sorry, that is very very strange. So we're gonna see some things here, folks. We got some. Got some documents here for you to see. I, I'm obviously going to kind of give you the Cliff Notes version. Um, you know, things that I thought were the most important, essentially. But obviously, obviously, the I will obviously be leaving the documents with the attachments in a link down below the video. So, here we go. We're going to move into the first set of documents. Oh, by the way, you may have noticed today that I am 
dressed up looking a little spiffy here. My buddy Paul Capaldi sent me this from Scotland. So it was it was very nice of him, and I just had to wear it and say, thanks, Paul. Um, Paul also does some YouTube videos over on his channel. I don't know if any of you know that. You can go check him out. Uh, I'll leave a link to one of his videos also below so that you can go over there and check that out. Uh, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and move into the documents. This first one, folks, is a little bit... I had to, There's a lot of that I just couldn't leave out. So there's a there's a, a little bit of text coming up here, but I'll be reading it for you. So you can even put your phone down and and just listen to me tell what tell you what's there. Because trust me, you know the documents are in my videos. You know I'm not going to be BSing you. So anyways, <laughs> here we go. Okay, <laughs> I think that's a good place to do a little pause. Um, you know I've just made a note in my head that the other funny thing about um, having conversations with a, a dude in Southern California, you hear, you learn a completely new language. I mean, you know, we, we both sides of the Atlantic, we speak English. Yeah. But honestly, some of the, some of the words he came out with, he didn't, uh, um, I, I, I couldn't make head or tail of. Um, he also being in California, they had certain uh, phrases which were more Spanish um but yeah it was it was also it was also good the other way there were there were words that i was able to share with him um he loved the word havering so uh, anyway let's hold it there and uh let's say i'll do the uh, the next bit of that video um in a uh, in a short while but i've got to go and do some work um, although the dog is just fast asleep over there in the corner uh, hard life for some of us isn't it eh? Okay, we'll catch you all soon Take, with the next part. Bye for now.